Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You're back with Darren at Green Pro Clean, window cleaners in Nottingham, Derbyshire, South Yorkshire, Leicestershire. And today we're here, I can't remember who asked me to do a quick video. They asked me, how do I blow off customers? Now, the thing about blowing off customers, I can't remember who asked me, but whoever you are, don't worry, your name will be in the title wherever that happens to go on the screen here. I'll put your name up there and make sure that I remember who it was and give you your shout out. Um, but how do I blow off customers? I'm guessing that question is how do I get rid of the customers I simply don't want? And it's quite simple. I'm upfront about it. I'm very straightforward about it. Business is business. Customers are not your friends. You may have friends who give you business and they are your friends. But then again, you will have customers. And uh, what I'm trying to say, there's a lot of window cleaners out there who are like, oh yeah, no, I'm pally with all my punters, isn't it? Yeah, I know them all on a first name basis. I know their kids' names. I know their dogs' names. I know their cat's birthday. I don't need to know none of that shit. I need to know the customer's name, the address, the phone number. That's it, and how much they pay. That's it. That's all I want to know about them. I want to turn out, do my job, do it right, and get paid. End of. I'm not in the making friends business. Um, I suck at making friends, but still, set that happy. I'm not in the making friends business. Um, I'm in the window cleaning business. Now, I'll get out of there. I'll clean the windows. I'll do my job. If a customer turns into the uh, proverbial PITA, pain in the arse, they're gone. They're out. It's that simple. Now, a lot of you will sit there and say, oh, yeah, but I'm just starting out and I've only got 100 customers and I can't afford to, blah, blah, blah. Here's my point. You can't afford not to sack them off. You can't afford to cut out. Think of it like cancer. Think of it like you allow one bad pain in the ass customer. You tolerate that. So then you'll go, oh, well, I'll tolerate Mrs. Brown being a pain in the ass. So I suppose I can tolerate Mrs. Smith being a pain in the ass as well, and so on and so forth. In fact, I guess if they're pain in the asses, we're talking prostate cancers here, guys. So, uh, but anyway, point being is you can't allow it. If you went at a quack and they say, uh, yeah, mate, you, you've got a problem there. You've got a lump and, uh, yeah, it's uh, that needs taken care of. You'd be sitting there going, how quick can you slice some dice, doc? Get me booked in. You wouldn't stand for it. You'd be on the treatment. You'd be getting it dealt with. You've got to treat your business the same. If a customer's a pain in the backside, I'll just have a word with them. i say, listen, you know, thank you for the chance, but I'm not interested in, in your business anymore. I'm not going to be cleaning your windows moving forwards, but thank you for your past business and uh, good luck with your future. And I leave. That's the end of it. I'll do it over the phone. I'll do it by text if they don't answer their phone. Preferably, I'll do it face to face so that they can see that I am a business. I'm not just me. The per Hello, I'm the window cleaner. Oh, Duffy my cat. Thank you, sir. Top of the morning, sir. Oh, you're, you're, you're so gracious. Thank you for the money that I've actually earned. Just give it. Do you get what I'm saying? None of that. It's just, I'm a business mate. You call me to do a job. I believe I've done that job to the best of my ability as agreed in, in our contract. I've done exactly what I said on the can. I've done your windows, your frames, your seals, your doors, top, bottom, front, back, all the way around on the day I said I would. And now you have to fulfill your end of the bargain, which is to pay me what you said you would. And that is it. And if they can't abide by that, if they can't get on board with that, I don't need them. Don't need them, don't want them, get rid of them, buy. Because I'm not gonna go home at the end of the day. Whenever I get in of an evening, I've got phone calls to make, not here obviously, but when I'm at home in the UK and I've been out on the rounds or whatever, I'll get in at four or whatever in the afternoon. And because all of my business is automated, all of my customers are online, everything's on the go cardless, I press a button during the day, everything syncs. I press a button when I get in in the evening, tomorrow's texts are sent, that's it. There's no future business talk when I get home of an evening. I'm not gonna take that toxic, cancerous crap into my house and let my wife see it eat at me. Let, let, let me get chewed up by it. Let me get defeated by it. Do you know what I mean? Let me get dragged down. And so, because when you're at home, if your other half is stressed, upset, depressed, well, that starts to drag you down too. And I don't want that in my personal life. I don't want that in my family life. I don't want to be the guy sitting down in the pub and my mates are like, oh yeah, so uh, how's it going? Oh, well, this customer... <laughs> Yeah, I'd rather be telling jokes about the Englishman, Irishman, Scotsman, and um, which is actually a funny <laughs> because yesterday I was on the phone for quite some time, believe it or not, to a lad in uh, in East Kilbride uh, up in Scotland there, and uh, then another lad in uh, County Armagh. So yeah, it was almost the Englishman, Irishman, Scotsman. Um, but by the way, you get what I'm saying, guys. 
You don't want that toxic toxicity. Toxicity? Is that a word? Now we've got to get on the Google. Um, toxicity, you don't want it in your business. If something is toxic, cut it out. Especially if you've got an employee, for example. You've got an employee, they want to go out, do the windows, do their round, impress their boss, happy days, this, that, the other. If they got, if you're sending them out to toxic customers who are like, oh yeah, where, 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 in their ears, they're like, oh, well, cry, I don't know about that, mate. He's, uh, I'll have to call Daz and find out what's going on. And yeah, not, not sure they ever, you know, and then they're feeling down. And so they're not loving the work. Do you get what I'm saying? So all of that's got to go. Right, the customer isn't your friend. If you've got friends that are customers, different story. But a customer isn't your friend. A customer is a customer. End of. If you walked into any self-respecting business out there and started reading them the right act, laying down the law and acting like the big I am, like a complete cock, um, giving it the large just because you can and you're feeling aggrieved, then they're just going to sit there and go, thank you, sir. Door's over there. See you later. And that's it. And that's the way the business should be. The, the old age old adage, the customer is always right. Well, it's French lesson time, kiddies, so block your ears. Um, bollocks. The customer is not always right. Good French word there. Um, the customer is not always right. In fact, the customer is very, very rarely right. The only time a customer is right is when you text message them, you turn up, the gate is open, the windows get cleaned, you press the sync button on your GoCardless app or your Squeegee or whatever you use, and it comes back, bosh, job paid. That's the only time a customer's right. Apart from that, customers are very, very, very rarely right. Um, so how do I sack them off? It's quite simple. I will tell you to your face, you know? Um, and that's not because I'm a big lad, I'm a hard lad or anything. It's because I'm gonna be honest with my customers. I don't, I want to sack them off in a fashion that makes them think twice before, let's say you work on my, let's say you're working on my patch. Here, you, I'm looking at you. Um, you're working on my patch. And I've just sacked off a customer, but they still want a window cleaner. So they look on the Google, they find you, and they call you out. And then they think they can treat you the way that they've just treated me. So uh, the issue with that is quite simple. I will sack them off in a firm but polite manner. In a firm, look, Mrs. Brown, right? I've done the very best I can. You're not going to get anything better than that. You know, that window's 30 years old with, uh, with, with hard water staining. So unless you want to have it properly restored, etc., that's the best it's ever going to be. So you can accept that or I'm sorry, but, you know, we're just not the company for you. And I will move on. I will move on, but I will have told them firmly so that they know what to expect when they call you out and you sit there and you go, right, okay, well, you know that's hard water staining, Mrs. Brown. Yeah, well, the last window cleaner mentioned that. So, you see, the toxic toxic stuff, it's got to go. It's just got to go. But sacking them off, rule number one is if a customer has to be sacked off, absolutely has to be sacked off, if you looked at your options, you've had a chat with them, uh, maybe you can sort it out. Maybe they will come around to your way of doing things. Or maybe they've got a genuine grievance and you come to an agreement. Happy days. Um, option two, if they've absolutely got to go, get rid of them. Shut them off by text, by phone, or face-to-face. -face. But, but, be polite about it, but be firm. So be polite and firm and just walk away. And when you're sitting again, I, I, I haven't got enough customers yet that I can sack him. Yeah, you can. Because the 30 minutes you're going to spend on his job listening to him moan and putting all that effort and time into it, you could go out and chap another dozen doors, canvas up a new job that's going to be a quality, grade A customer that's good for your soul. So have a little think about that. Comments, guys, you know where they go. Thumbs up, thumbs down, yada, yada, yada. That hand signal there was me waving to the missus just over yonder. He's just come to call me for lunch. So I was off to get my tuck in. And um, I said tuck, I did say tuck, so I don't censor that one uh, at YouTube. But anyway, peace to all. I uh, hope to see you in the very near future back in the UK. Um, ciao for now.